Hello, this is the 2021 Design Day video for Team 21061, Steel Polymer Protective Armor Plate. My name is Armando Montano, and I'm the team lead for this project. We will now introduce the team through the following team photo. On the top row, you have myself, Brayden, Abdul Rahman. On the bottom row, you have Rina, Ivik, and Tom. This is our project poster, which shows all of the most important information collected over the past two semesters working on this project. We will now go into greater detail of each section. The goal of the project was to create a lightweight, durable, and cost-effective armor that could eventually certify as a level three armor under the NIJ 0101.06 specification. Specifically, our objectives were to create a plate weighing under eight pounds, measure less than or equal to three-eighths of an inch thick, and have a production price less than a typical ceramic polymer plate. This would be done by implementing a unique combination of steel and polymer as well as employing design for manufacturing principles throughout the project. For example, during the modeling and procurement stages, part of our selection criteria was the ease of production so that whenever our sponsor decided to fully implement the product, there would be little to no issue. The polymer we decided on using was UHMW PE. Some of the polyethylene fibers we were considering were HP 2014, HP 50, and Indonex. All of them perform similarly when it comes to ballistic impact, but HP 2014T was ultimately chosen due to a smaller aerial density. The steels we considered included AR500, AR550, AR600, and AR650, the numbers corresponding to each respective Brunel hardness. The problem with steels above AR550 is they are difficult to produce at thicknesses less than one quarter inch, and they are more brittle, therefore less bendable than the other steels. Even with these issues, the fact that they are so tough under ballistic impact gives them an edge up, as long as thin enough material can be procured. Our first prototype consisted of an eighth inch steel strike face and quarter inch polyethylene backing. This design weighed in at 4.75 pounds and was three eighths of an inch thick, but it lacked performance. Our second prototype consists of six layers of polyethylene to mitigate spalling, which is the fragmentation of the projectile into surrounding body parts, and AR650 steel to dissipate the bulk of the energy and 15 layers of polyethylene in the back for comfort and trauma mitigation. This design has a projected weight of six and a half pounds and thickness of three eighths of an inch, and it performed much better than the first design. Before I get into the model and a little bit on the steel choices, I wanna give some background on the NIJ standards we used. During our project, there were two NIJ documents in play, the NIJ 0101.06 and the NIJ 0101.07. During the first semester, the plan was to aim for the NIJ 07 qualification, which includes the neutralization of the three projectiles shown in the image on the left. In the NIJ 07 document, only one of these projectiles has drawings for modeling, which is the 762 by 39. So at the time, we assumed that that was the highest level threat. That's why we modeled with that projectile. The NIJ 06, however, only requires neutralization of the 762 by 51 projectile, which is why we tested with that one. Early in the second semester, it was decided between us and our sponsor that the NIJ 07 was no longer in play because the release date of the document kept getting pushed back. So there is some discrepancy between model and reality in regards to the projectiles used. ANSYS explicit dynamics was used to model this impact. The initial choice of steel was AR600 due to its strength, but the FAA model showed that an eighth inch of AR500 steel and a quarter inch of polyethylene was enough to stop the threat. So our first prototype was built based on that. We thought we had built enough safety in to the design by selecting an AR500 steel that was rated to stop the 762 by 51 projectile. But we later found out that the velocity used to test this steel was 40% less than the required velocity in the NIJ standard. For our second prototype, we made sure to use a steel that was rated to stop the 760 by 51 projectile at the correct velocity. Now I'll show a clip of the FEA model. This clip shows the results of the model under the impact of our initial design. The armor in this model completely stopped the projectile with no penetration, as you can see. But we did not observe any spalling in the model, which shows another discrepancy between the model and reality. Now I'll pass it off to Braden to talk about fabrication and prototyping. Thanks, Armando. After de determining the materials from trade studies, finite element analysis, and contact with suppliers, the team moved on to fabrication and prototyping. Fabrication consists of using a fabric cutter to cut the UHMWPE sheets to size, utilizing a water jet cutter to trim the choice of steel down to its profile, bending or not the steel. And finally, the most important part, the autoclave fusion process. On the right of the section, we can see the autoclave. The autoclave fusion process has the purpose of joining the UHMWP and steel together. 
These materials are vacuum sealed and held at 260 degrees Fahrenheit and 150 PSI until fusion is complete. After exiting the autoclave, the plates are ready to have the final touches put on. The edges are trimmed to profile and a casing of encapsule lock or a wrapping of Cordura is applied. The first prototype was primarily about anti-spalling. A six layer and 12 layer of polyethylene in the front were compared and it, can, it was seen that there was no significant difference between the two. So although the six layer definitely has more delamination, like seen in this video, the six layers is more than enough to capture this ball. So as can be seen from the picture below, we again tested four configurations of the new HAP, the second prototype. The bubbling of the UH and WPE and the collapse of the bubbles is due to the small surface area and is not a concern for the 10 by 12 profile. The second prototype had the goal of nailing performance and as can be seen by this video, our goal was achieved. With that, we now move on to the results of our product and its conclusion. From the beginning, we employed a design for manufacturing mindset at every step of this process. We chose options that would make it much simpler to mass produce these plates for the consumers. The first prototype, as Amarna said earlier, was significantly under eight pounds and had an average thickness below three eighths of an inch. What it lacked was performance. The team has gone through many changes in the course of this project, the primary points being material selection and point design. At this point in time, we have considered eight different types of steel and three different types of UH and WPE, finally deciding for the first point design on AR500 from CMC Impact and Dyneema from DSM. Uh, the second point design is different in almost every single way. The steel strike face has been moved be between the layers of UH and WPE so that we have a small layer in the front, trauma mitigation in the back. The steel used in the second prototype has a better performance than a quarter inch of AR500 with the same price point and a lighter weight. With that, there have been multiple lessons learned so far. First and foremost, pay close attention to properties and detailing of performance sheets. Trust, but verify. Spall mitigation is also highly sought after by consumers. And last but not least, order early, have a backup plan. Now to tie this off, we're gonna talk about the future scope of work. The future scope of work on this project consists of a continuation of pursuit of this project. Both the team and the sponsor are very interested in seeing this project being successfully completed. We are very close to doing so. The team is hopeful. But of course, we could not have come this far without the help of these following people. So team 21061 would like to thank our mentor, Doug May, for his guidance throughout the past two semesters, our sponsor, Spartan Armor Systems, and Mahendra Medakuru for letting us use their facilities and equipment and helping us in our design processes. Tim Kurz for, uh, from CMC Metals for assistance in initial steel selection. Matthew Craig from DSM for assistance in polyethylene procurement and understanding. And finally, Eddie Terenzi from SSAB for assistance in final steel procurement. With that, I would like to thank all of you for your time and I hope you have a wonderful day.